If I had to choose one research finding from the field of second language acquisition for everyone to know, it would be this. The 1973 and 1974 studies of Heidi Dulé and Marina Burt were the start of contemporary SLA research, and you still hear so many of their ideas echoed in the field today. These studies remind us that the field was born of the question, to what extent are first and second language acquisition the same? And these studies supported what has been called the identity hypothesis, the idea that the internal processes are the same. They were the first to document accuracy orders and to demonstrate that the errors made by second language acquirers can be attributed neither to the first language nor to the second language. Also looking to first language acquisition as the starting point for second language acquisition, Stephen Pitt Corder, six years before, had already made the proposal that a systematic route is taken in second language development and suggested that this developing knowledge, what he called a transitional competence, is a system in its own right rather than a defective second language system. The preferred term in SLA today is Larry Salinger's term, interlanguage, which represents the same idea. Julie and Bert provided the evidence for what Corder had also called the built-in syllabus. Prior to Julie and Bert, but in the same year, Roger Brown had provided longitudinal, that is, over time, evidence, and Jill and Peter de Billier provided cross-sectional, one point in time, evidence of first language acquisition orders. Brown observed that accuracy of a structure was stable once it passed a 90% accuracy threshold, and thus that is how he defined acquisition. On the contrary, de Villiers and de Villiers did not look at when something is acquired, but just its accuracy relative to other structures. Brown had referred to the developing process as creative construction, the term that Dooley and Burt adopt. People construct a second language system in their heads creatively, because the system follows its own rules. Different from the first, and second language. Of first language acquisition, Dooley and Burt said that errors are not indicators of faulty learning, nor of a need for instructional intervention. Rather, making errors is a necessary condition in the learning process. Aware of the negative connotations of the terms errors and mistakes, in 1972, they suggested they be called goofs. Unfortunately, that did not catch on. Marina Burt, Heidi Dooley, and Eduardo Hernandez Chavez developed the bilingual syntax measure in the early 1970s to test the relative oral proficiency of Spanish-English bilingual children. The researchers asked 33 short questions about what was in seven cartoon pictures, taking 10 to 15 minutes to complete. It feels like a conversation about pictures. The questions are carefully selected such that no matter the content of the answer, certain word order and word form rules will likely be used. For example, when pointing at a fat guy and asking, why is he so fat, the response requires a third person present indicative form. For example, because he eats too much, or because he drinks beer. Of 513 errors made by the 197 young ESL learners, only about 5% were influenced by the first language. The conclusion was that universal language processing strategies were at work. Another study published in the same 1973 article found similar orders of accuracy with only minor variation among 151 young ESL students from three different major U.S. cities, and despite a different quality and quantity of English exposure. For example, the kids were more accurate with plurals and the present progressive than the third-person singular forms and possessives. So are these late acquired structures more complex? Is the textbook grammatical syllabi based on these orders? No and no. Furthermore, the order was similar to the first language order. Dooley and Burt say the exact same order is not expected, since there are obvious differences in age, memory, conceptual and cognitive development, etc. The existence of an invariant order is enough to support the identity hypothesis. Then, in 1974, Dooley and Burt compared the orders of 60 Spanish-speaking to 55 Chinese-speaking young ESL kids and showed the accuracy orders of everyone were similar. All the target forms tested are called grammatical morphemes, that is, the minimal unit of a word that has a grammatical meaning or function. Hence why these are called the morpheme order studies, later also known as the natural order studies, because Stephen Krashen based much of his natural order hypothesis on the results from these studies.